Windows 11 will launch on the 5th of October and Microsoft is promising a lot. Not only a new design, but more performance and new features like direct storage. But while Microsoft hasn't spared a second to show off their new sleek Windows 11 design, it seems like they try to make the hardware requirement as confusing as possible. If you still aren't sure if Windows 11 will work on your system, I don't blame you. To clear up the confusion as much as possible, I will go through the minimum requirements to actually install Windows 11 on your system and explain why some things are a little bit different this time. But first, if you wonder if Windows 11 will cost you anything, don't worry, it's a free upgrade for everyone who already owns Windows 10. Now let's take a look at Microsoft's official Windows 11 requirements. At first glance, they look pretty basic and about every modern system should be well within specs. For the CPU, you need a dual core with at least 1 GHz clock speed and 64-bit support. Any CPU going back 10 plus years should be enough to support it in theory, but Microsoft is hiding something very important behind their support list. As I will explain in just a minute, this list is actually pretty restrictive and some of you with first generation Ryzen CPUs or KB Lake CPUs might not be fully supported by Windows 11. Then we have 4GB of RAM and a 64GB hard drive based storage, all pretty basic requirements. Next are two interesting points. Number one, the system firmware has to be fully UEFI enabled with secure boot support. And number two, a trusted platform module or TPM is required. Then you need a DirectX 12 graphics card and of course a monitor. And last but not least, there is a difference between the Pro and the Home version when it comes to what account you can use. Previously, you could decide between using a Microsoft online account or a local offline account. Now the local offline account is only available in the Pro version. If you're upgrading to Windows 11 Home, you will be forced to use an online Microsoft account. Let's go into the detail a little bit and start with the system firmware first. The system firmware has to be fully UEFI enabled, which isn't really a problem since most motherboards for the past couple of years have supported UEFI, so your motherboard should support it too. Where it does get a little bit tricky is the so-called compatibility support module, or CSM for short. It's a feature that was designed to allow modern UEFI based motherboards to still support old school BIOS boot features. And very often it's enabled by default because the motherboard vendors want to allow the greatest compatibility out of the box. Now, if you installed Windows 10 or any previous Windows, while CSM was enabled in your BIOS, your Windows installation was using MBR as a boot system instead of the new GPT. That would mean that your system isn't 100% UEFI compatible and it might stop you from upgrading to Windows 11. You can check if your current partitions are using MBR or GPT in the Windows Disk Manager. The secure boot requirement is pretty basic since it only has to be supported but not enabled and I think I don't know of any mother motherboard who doesn't support secure boot. Next is the trusted platform module. That's also something that most modern motherboards support either via a actual hardware TPM chip or via something called firmware TPM or FTPM for short. Most of your motherboards should support it. Maybe you need to enable that feature in the BIOS. But now let's talk about the main issue when you're trying to upgrade to Windows 11 and that's the Microsoft CPU support list. I've put a link to both the Intel and AMD CPU support list down in the description below so you can check it out by yourself. You will probably notice that the first generation Ryzen CPUs and Intel's KB Lake CPUs are not officially supported. Second gen Ryzen and Coffee Lake on the other hand are supported. That begs the question, why does Microsoft support a Core i3-8100 over a 7700K or why is a Ryzen 5 2600 supported but a Ryzen 5 1600 not? The official answer is Virtualization Based Security or VBS for short. VBS has two main components. The first is core isolation and the second is memory integrity. Both of these settings are already available in Windows 10. You could enable them if your software and your hardware supports them. But for Windows 11, Microsoft wants to make sure that every system that runs Windows 11 actually can enable it. The problem here is that especially the memory integrity system, and I have to read the official name of my screen because it's called Hypervisor Protected Code Integrity or HVCI short, these can be very taxing on your system and might reduce performance if you enable them. To counter that possible performance loss, 
modern CPUs support something that's called mode-based execution control or MBEC short. This function allows the CPU to enable the memory integrity setting without losing as much performance. And since Microsoft wants all their Windows 11 based systems to be able to support these new security features, but they also want them to run these with little to no performance loss, they require MBEC for all their supported CPUs. Where it stops to make sense is if you take a look and see which CPUs actually support MBEC. AMD only introduced it with Zen 2, so Zen and Zen Plus, respectively Ryzen 1000 and 2000, do not officially support it. So there's no reason why Microsoft would allow a second gen Ryzen CPU on the support list, but first gen Ryzen CPUs not. It looks like a completely random decision. It gets even stranger if you look at Intel. KB Lake, for example, does support MBEC, but Microsoft decided to only add a few selected KB Lake CPUs to their support list. Some of them are the Core X based high end desktop CPUs, like the Core i7-7900X. And then there is a very specific one, the, let me read it off, Core i7-7820HQ. Why would Microsoft put a very specific KB Lake CPU on their support list, but not the more higher end and faster i7-7700K? The solution is pretty simple. Microsoft is currently still selling their Surface Studio 2 and the Surface Studio 2, you guessed it, is running on the i7-7820HQ. So Microsoft just took that CPU and put it on their CPU support list. As you can see, the required CPU support for MBEC to enable virtualization-based security is just a pretext. In reality, some of the CPUs who do support MBEC are not on the support list, and others who don't support it are on the support list. So if you're running a first-gen Ryzen or a KB Lake system, what can you do about it? There are good news. While Windows 11 might deny you the upgrade if you try to upgrade from within Windows 10, let's say through Microsoft Update, it will allow to install Windows 11 on CPUs without official support if you do it from a bootable device like a USB drive. Your computer still has to be fully UEFI compatible with Secure Boot and a TPM module, be it in hardware or software. But with that trick, you can get around the official CPU support list. It's still unclear if Microsoft will allow Windows 11 updates on systems installed on a not officially supported CPU, but since there is no real reason why not, I think the chances are pretty good. Or you know, just don't update and stick with Windows 10 for a little bit longer. Because the only real new feature in Windows 11 that I'm excited about is direct storage. And for that you need a current gen NVIDIA Ampere or AMD Arduino A2 GPU in combination with a PCI Express NVMe SSD. And on top of that, it's not even fully finalized yet and there is no games that support it. In a nutshell, Windows 11 tightens the grip around security and you need a fully UEFI enabled system with secure boot and a TPM chip. If your CPU is on the compatibility list, you can upgrade from within Windows 10. If it's not and you really want to install Windows 11, you can do it with a bootable drive. I'm really interested to hear if you're planning on upgrading to Windows 11, if your CPU is in the support list or not, or if you want to stick with Windows 10 for a little bit longer. As always, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more content, and see you next time.